Okay, I'm going to try to show you how to solve one of those syllabification problems that we were doing in class yesterday. Okay, so we'll walk you through uh, the basics. Okay, so this is the language uh, Godzillan, and it's important to read the instructions. It says that there's a suffix with the underlying form schwa k. Okay, so let's look at these first four forms. We've got gu versus goose. If you look down the second column, there seems to be an s suffix everywhere. And for this uh, first row, there's only one alternate. It's always gu. So by the non-alternation assumption, we can assume that the underlying form is gu. If we look at the second row, we've got two alternates, right? There's go and gu. And so the underlying form, we'll assume, is either go or gu. But it can't be gu because gu is already taken, or more, more carefully, if it was gu and there was a rule that turned u to o, then we would wonder why there wasn't an o here, right? So that's our normal MTP reasoning. And if we look down at our choices for possible rules, they're very restricted. Is the rule u becomes o in an open syllable, or is it o becomes u in a closed syllable? Since this is go, the right version of rule x must be O becomes U in closed syllables. So this is underlying, the underlying form for this word must be G-O-S. Okay, so we know what the correct rule is. Uh, the next question is, do we have a rule that inserts uh, schwa between a P and a K, or is schwa deleted after any vowel, after an O or a U, let's say? And this is obvious because if we look, remember our instruction said that the underlying form of the suffix is schwa k. So if we sometimes have a schwa in the suffix and sometimes don't, well, either there's schwa insertion or deletion, but we're told it was there in the input, so it must be a schwa deletion rule. Okay. Uh, once we see that, uh, actually, once we've uh, gotten that far, let's answer the next question, which asks about. Uh, how clusters are syllabified. So it says stop-stop clusters are split across a coda and a following onset. And so let's look at an example of that. Here uh, we've got uh, two stops in a row, right? This must be underlyingly uh, GUP because it's a constant GUP, 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 GUP. That's not going to tell us anything. But here we sometimes have GUP and sometimes GOP. Okay, and we know that there's a, it's got to have an underlying O, so it's got to be different from the previous one. And there's a rule that O becomes U in closed syllables. So we know that this syllable must be closed here. <laughs> you can ignore Donna making funny noises in the background. Uh, that O must become a U here, uh, and it's because it, the syllable is closed. But here, notice that the O did not become a U, so that suggests that the syllabification is go plus pro or go plus plo. So are stop liquid clusters split? The answer is that's false because the syllabification of go pro must be something like G-O-P-R-O. -O. There's an open syllable here. The O is in an open syllable, so it doesn't become a U, because it's not in a closed syllable. Okay? Uh, and now we have to answer the question about the, the rule ordering. Uh, does rule X occur before rule Y? So we're talking about the version of rule X that we've selected and the version of rule Y that we've selected. Which one happens first? Uh, the important form to look at is uh, this form here. Because here we have an O in a closed syllable, and it didn't become a U. So one way to deal with that is to, is to posit that at the time that O's became used in closed syllables, this wasn't a closed syllable. Well, how could we do that? Well, we could set up the underlying form to be G-O, and then we have the suffix schwa K. So now the syllable boundary is here. It's go plus uk. That's an open syllable because there's no coda. So this rule wouldn't apply. So if we first apply the rule uh, rule x, 
at this stage in the derivation uh, first, it's not going to have any effect here. And then we apply our rule y, which deletes the schwa after any vowel. This is going to come out as gok. Okay, so we have an o in a closed syllable that hasn't turned into u because of the rule ordering. Okay, so uh, what are we going to call this ordering? So rule x has to come before rule y. Imagine what had happened, and so we what would have happened. Here's our surface representation, G O K. Okay, what would have happened if the order had been reversed? So if we had the same underlying form, G O schwa K. If we had first done rule Y, then we would have G O K. Now this would be in a closed syllable, and we apply rule X, uh, and we would have gotten G U K. Right, and it would have merged with it would have been come out uh, homophonous with this form. Uh, but that's and that would give us G U K. That would be the wrong output. But what you could see, uh, what happened is, the vowel deletion rule created the closed syllable here, turned this into one closed syllable, and so that the O to U rule could apply. So that would have been feeding. Y would have fed X. So since that's the wrong order. We don't want that feeding order. The right order is for y to come after x, so we would say that y counterfeeds x. Okay. Now the underlying forms for each root, I didn't give you a column to, to write this in, but the first root for eradicate is gu, the next one is go, the next one is goop, the next one is gop, uh, and then we have gor, oops, sorry, gur, gur, g-u-r, and g-o-r. And you should be able to see that uh, uh, you get a close, you should be able to tell that here the double r's must syllabify, must have a syllable boundary between them because we, ooh, that's the wrong case. Yeah, no, that's the wrong form. Here, where we have sometimes have o, in an open syllable, uh, but here uh, the syllable is closed, and so we know that RR sequences have a syllable boundary between them. Okay, so that's the kind of reasoning that we need to, to do.